to get started with the DS18 sensor with Arduino, the first thing you want to do is get it all wired up. So here's a simple wiring diagram. I'll try and link this below, just found it online. So you've got your ground data and 5 volts. Um, also, since we're giving this 5 volts, you can tell this is not in parasite mode. Uh, you could, if you want to, do that. I think what you do is you bring the power pin to ground, and then I'm not sh you might change something with the way the uh, resistor is wired in. So maybe look that up. Um, after you have it wired up though, then you also want to grab two libraries. You want the one wire library and the Dallas temperature library. And if you go ahead and extract those, you'll get the libraries. You want to put them into your uh, the Arduino libraries folder, which on Windows and Mac, that should be in your sketchbook folder. So that's pretty simple. And then on Linux, it's going to be in user share Arduino. Um, before you do that, though, uh, you see Dallas temperature it came out it's got the name with the dashes you need to change it so that it's just letters and numbers so I'm gonna just call it Dallas temperature and that's just something the Arduino IDE needs doesn't like dashes just letters and numbers so pretty simple and then once you put those in your library folder which I've already done. It's not okay. Yeah, I've already done that. Um, you may have to start your the IDE really restart it, or else you won't be able to find the libraries. But I've already done that, so don't need to do it. Uh, Go ahead and include the libraries. So one wire the H and then I'm gonna set up the functions. And okay. Um you need to make a one wire to start I'll call it one wire and I'm gonna put it on pin six and then I'm gonna make a Dallas temperature called temp sensor and I'm gonna pass it the one wire we just made and actually I'm gonna put that on pin nine because that's what I have it wired to doesn't matter and then in the setup, you want to say temp sensor or whatever you named it dot begin. And I'm also going to start the serial on 9600 baud so that we can spit that out to serial. And then in our loop function, we're going to say temp sensor dot request temperatures and then we, I'm gonna make a double I'll call it temp and it's gonna be temp sensor dot get temp C by index so here we're getting it by index uh, the one wire protocol is it's kind of like I2C so you can put more than one device on the same bus and then address them independently so I wish I had more of these sensors that I could kind of play around with more than one of them if you got a whole bunch of them maybe make a weather station or something if you're a meteorologist but I've only got one, so it's the first one on the bus. And then here, temp C. Uh, you could also get Fahrenheit if you wanted, 
it's probably not going to show up as a keyword, but I think that's just uh, it's not added to the keywords in the library. I might do that later. Um, if you go ahead and take a look in the header file, actually, then temp, temp f it, it, all it's doing is just calling temp c. So I'm just going with temp c. But if you're doing Fahrenheit, you might as well call temp f and have it do the conversion for you. Uh, now I'm going to spin stuff out to serial. So serial dot print, and I'm also going to make it comma delimited so temp and the comma will help us when we're parsing in Qt so then also flush it just to make sure that it gets out and we need to delay so I'm gonna delay by a thousand because I read that somewhere that that's a recommended value for the Dallas temperature library to delay by a thousand so one second between readings uh, it's especially if you're doing parasite mode because uh, with parasite it's got a capacitor built in to the sensor and since you're not giving it power it's charging the capacitor for off of the data pin that's why it's called parasite and that's it's doing that when you're not querying it and then when you query it well it's running off the capacitor so if you go and call it real quickly you don't put that delay in there then maybe it doesn't behave as you'd expect because it's low on power because it's not able to charge but 1000 was something I read somewhere the value a good value to use uh, actually let's go ahead and save that I'll call that temp sensor and let's verify that uh oh what went wrong Capitalize my H. Let's try that. And if, oh man, I'm typing pretty badly. The, yeah, request temperatures. Um, that should be good. Okay, so I've already got that plugged in. But go ahead and plug it in and upload. And then if we go to the serial monitor, you should see Celsius temperatures. So it looks like it's pretty room temperature right now. Let's go ahead and warm that up a bit. So I'm holding it and it's gonna warm up. So that looks like it's working. Uh, there are, are uh, I was talking about the delay here. If you're powering it, I don't think you have to wait a thousand milliseconds, but even if you do like very small delay, like 50 seconds, it's still, it takes some time to query it. So this should be like 20 readings a second. You're gonna see it's not that. I didn't open the serum monitor. It'll be faster, but it's not 20 readings a second. So there, are, I, I know there are some limitations to how fast you can read it. I don't know why anyone would really, really want to query 20 times a second for anything you're doing with an Arduino. Can't imagine what you'd be doing, but just keep that in mind. I think a thousand is a pretty good value or less. I mean, less times per second, so bigger delay. But 
this looks good now so let's go ahead and get the cute 